In this screencast, we're going to discuss the regulation of blood calcium levels. As a review, remember calcium is needed for many other things in the body besides just bone density. It is important in order for the heart to contract properly. It's also important for muscle contraction. It's also important for your neurons, the cells of your nervous system, to send signals. And it's also important for blood clotting or coagulation. So remember that in the realm of things that bone density is the least important aspect of your body that calcium is needed for as compared to other things like your heart beating and your nervous system functioning and so on. Blood calcium is controlled by a negative feedback mechanism. Again, this should be reviewed from the early in the semester when we talked about a negative feedback mechanism. We're always trying to bring whatever we're controlling, in this case blood calcium, back to set point. All right, back to set point. So let's start here with blood calcium level decreases. Again, this can be, it's decreasing within a normal range, but it's still decreasing or going away from set point. What will happen is that will stimulate the release of parathyroid hormone, which is secreted by the parathyroid glands. These are glands that are located behind the thyroid glands, and there are thyroid gland, and there are four of them. Now think about this: if blood calcium levels going down, the goal of parathyroid hormone is to bring blood calcium level back up. So think about the cells that we talked about. We talked about osteoblast and osteoclast. What will parathyroid hormone do to these cells? It will excite or stimulate one of them and inhibit the other. So again, think about what those cells will do in response to parathyroid hormone. Again, with our goal to bring blood calcium levels back up. What that hormone will do, it will stimulate osteoclasts. Now what do osteoclasts do? Osteoclasts promote the breakdown of bone. So by stimulating osteoclasts, they will break down the bone and send the calcium into the bloodstream, which will increase the blood calcium. It will also inhibit osteoblasts. What do blasts do? Blasts build bone. So if the blasts are working, they will take the calcium out of the bloodstream and build bone. We don't want that to happen because that would lower cal blood calcium levels. So it's going to stimulate osteoclasts and inhibit osteoblasts or inhibit the building of bone. Both of these will contribute to blood calcium levels going up. When blood calcium goes up where it should be, then that's going to have a negative effect on parathyroid hormone. That's where we get the negative feedback mechanism. It will turn this off if blood calcium levels are going up. Now let's say that you have a breakfast of a gallon of milk and a pound of cheese and two scoops of ice cream. You have a large amount of calcium in your blood. Your blood calcium level starts to go up, again away from set point. What's going to happen? Calcitonin, a hormone, will be secreted by the thyroid gland. It will also influence these cells, but in a slightly different manner. Which of these cells will calcitonin stimulate, and which one will it inhibit? Calcitonin will stimulate osteoblast. It will stimulate the building of bone. So the osteoblast will take the calcium from the blood and build bone. What will that do to blood calcium? It will decrease it. It will also inhibit osteoclasts. If we break down bone, we throw more calcium into the bloodstream. And that's not what we want to happen. So it will inhibit osteoclasts. So it's important for this that you know the hormones, the glands, and what those hormones cause the cells to do very important that you know what each of the cells does or else you'll get them mixed up. As we showed before, when blood calcium decreases, that will turn off calcitonin secretion by the thyroid gland. Now remember what we talked about with hormones early in the semester, that they have an influence on many different cells throughout the body. So these hormones influence osteoblast and osteoclast, but they also influence other parts of the body. So, looking at this question, which of the following causes more calcium to be released into the urine by the kidneys? Released into the urine, that means it's going to go into the urine, and where's the urine going to go? It's going to go down the toilet. 
So this is a way of getting rid of, of getting rid of calcium from the body. So which of these two hormones is going to stimulate calcium to be released into the urine? The answer is calcitonin. We go back to this drawing, calcitonin is secreted when blood calcium levels increase. One way to get rid of blood calcium is to release it into the urine where it will leave the body. What will parathyroid hormone level do to the amount of calcium released into the urine? It will do the opposite. When parathyroid hormone is secreted, it means blood calcium levels are low. So we don't want to release it into the urine. We want to keep it in the blood supply. So both these hormones not only influence osteoblasts and osteoclasts, but they also influence the kidneys and the release or not the release of calcium through the urinary system. The last system, and I know it's hard to read this top line, but it says which hormone causes more calcium to be absorbed into the bloodstream from the digestive system. Remember what this means, absorbed into the bloodstream. So when you eat something, it does you no good unless whatever you eat gets into your bloodstream. So this would cause more calcium to go from what you've eaten through your small intestine into the blood supply into the body. So which of these hormones would cause more calcium to be absorbed into the bloodstream from the digestive system? The answer is parathyroid hormone. Why? Because parathyroid hormone is secreted, go back again, when blood calcium level decreases. So we want to bring more into the bloodstream. One of the places we can get more of it from is from what you eat. So parathyroid hormone will cause more calcium to be absorbed into the bloodstream from the digestive system. Now just a reminder, what you need for this to happen is not just parathyroid hormone but you also need vitamin D. Vitamin D allows for parathyroid hormone to do its job and allows for the absorption of calcium. Where do you get vitamin D? The natural source is from the sun. You can also take it in in your diet. Okay? You can also take it in your diet and we talked about this in relationship to the skin a couple weeks ago. Now what would calcitonin do? What effect would calcitonin have on the calcium you absorb from what you eat? Calcitonin would decrease the amount of calcium absorbed from the bloodstream. Why? Because calcitonin is secreted when your blood calcium goes up, and so you don't need it, so you're just going to get rid of it through your digestive system. So again, this is a review of how calcium is regulated by the two hormones. Um, you have this in your PowerPoint, and I've also given you this as a handout. Uh, make sure you can go through this step by step and you understand the influence of the hormones, what glands they come from, and what influence they have on the different cells and on the urinary system as well as the digestive system.